Hey everyone, welcome back to NDC. Today we're diving into the Swift UI menu. This is all about creating action. Now, a lot of people may confuse this with the option picker with the menu style. Big mistake. Let's go ahead and clear this up. A menu is built for actions. When you tap an item, something happens. Maybe you delete a file, rename, duplicate, or maybe you share something. A picker is more for state. You're not performing an action. You're changing a setting, maybe updating a theme. So think of a menu like when you go to your file, create new, file, open recent, right? This is something that's more action oriented. So if you're interested on creating your own menus built around actions, let's go ahead and dive on in. I also have this example here with some different customization options available on my GitHub, link in the description below. Otherwise, let's dive on into it. So before we get started, you're gonna to need to have Xcode installed on your Mac and you'll need to have SwiftUI as your interface. You can add this to an existing project. I'm just creating a new one for demonstration purposes. Okay, to create a menu, we use the menu keyword with the capital M. You can then provide it with a title key if you'd like. So if we were to have this be options per se, we'll then need to add our argument braces. And we can see with nothing open, we have our little options we could press on it, but currently uh, nothing's happening. <laughs> so within the argument braces, this is where we can add different things like buttons. Buttons are great because we wanna have those contextual actions. So if we add a button here, we can give it a label of action one. From there, we can give it some action. So I'll just go ahead and print that we've pressed, or maybe we could just say action one. And we can duplicate this for our next button. Now this is the most, most basic level for the menu. So now that's been updated, when we click on options, we can see here we have action one and action two. If I press either one, it'll perform that action. In this case, it's just printing out which action we have pressed. So you can do the label as the argument within the brackets, I typically stay away from this one because I like to have a little bit more of a custom label. We can do so by outside of the braces of the menu, adding label, a colon, and then adding a brace. From here, we'll add a label view. Let's go ahead and just call this one options, and then we can choose an image. I'm gonna opt to do a system image because I don't have anything imported. And let's go ahead and let's grab a menu image. Let's go ahead and do the menu card. Now we can see we have our options, just looks way, way more cleaner with a label. And with our alerts, we can actually assign those destructive rules as well. So let's say for whatever reason, we had a delete item within this button. We can also assign it to have a role and let's set this one to be destructive. And from here is where we'd have that delete logic. We can see with destructive, It'll have that red signaling to users that this is something that's going to delete or remove something. You can also include dividers between these different buttons. So if we wanted to add a divider here, always a little bit hard to see the dividers by default, but it is that great option. If you want to go even further beyond, you can actually include sections. So let's say this section up top was our editing section or maybe action section. We then want to add a brace and encapsulate this entire section here. You can see here it's holding everything up here. Then we'd have the divider. So now when we click on the button menu, you can see action section. And then above that is the delete item with the destructive tag. So you're not limited to just the plain text. You can add those custom labels for any of those dangerous actions like delete. Always use that rule destructive. Swift UI will automatically mark it red, signaling danger to the user. Keep it organized with the sections and dividers to make the group related actions much, much cleaner. Not limited to just buttons, however. Let's go ahead and also add a toggle. For our toggle, we're gonna add a state private variable real quick just to make sure that it works. And we'll call this one dark mode. And by default, it'll be off with false. Then within our section, we'll keep it under the action section today. We can add our toggle. Let's call it dark mode. And then the is on is going to be based on the dark mode variable. Now, when we open up our options, 
we can see our dark mode, although it looks a little bit different than a toggle. With this style of toggle, when we're selecting on the menu, we'll have this little check mark next to it, as opposed to a normal toggle where we kind of have like the little, the knob that goes to like green or whatever you decided to tint it. Instead, we have this check mark. And just to see the logic in action, let's actually have some text that displays whether or not it is on or off. We'll say dark mode is, then we'll have the dark mode is on or off. So now when we go on our simulator, let's go ahead and toggle it on. Dark mode is on. Again, we kind of have that little check mark next to it. And this allows us to toggle things on or off. Now the section organization is great, but also you can actually have nested menus or sub menus if you'd like. Let's go ahead and create a new one because we've, we've definitely spent our time in this menu. Let's go ahead and create another one. And I'll just call this one sub menu. So let's go ahead and create a button. And this one will just say it's, you know, does something that's new and whatever action that would normally happen would go there. Then still within the braces of the menu, let's make another menu. And this one I'll say open recent. And we'll add our braces once again. And then we'll just add some placeholder buttons. Let's, let's say we're opening up project one. And we'll also have a project two. Okay, so let's click on the sub menu. We can see our open recent and the users will know because it has that little chevron saying that, hey, you can actually go to another sub menu. We can press on it and it opens it on up or we can cascade it again, which is pretty cool. I do like having a little sub menu. Just make sure you're not nesting too many of them. It might get a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit annoying. User experience should always come first. Now we don't have much in the way of the menu style, unfortunately. So if we were to try to do the menu style and do dot notation, we have the borderless button or button. The borderless button style, to my knowledge, is actually just Mac OS only, unfortunately. A couple more caveats for iOS and iPad. Menus appear as context pop-ups. As we can see here, they kind of just hover and pop up above the screen, and they support those roles, destructive, cancel, etc. For Mac OS, these behave like native Mac OS menus with more styling and options. You can use that menu style for Mac OS to adjust the appearance. So let's go ahead and enable Mac OS. And I'll go ahead and run this on my Mac. And just as that's loading up for watch and TV OS, menus behave a little bit differently and they're actually often replaced by buttons or context actions. Okay, and here is our SwiftUI view on our Mac OS. We can see here it's more of a traditional drop down that you're used to as opposed to that kind of pop up that's you know kind of hovering and with the sub menu we can just hover over it instead of needing to press and commit and we can choose what we want pretty quick one today but there is so much that you can do with menus but let's just take a moment to recap on what you can do you can have a label Again, I always recommend if you really want the full control, adding the label at the end of the menu, just like how you could do it with most views that have a label, like your buttons, to get a little bit more control. You can have text, image, or even a custom view. The items that you have can be buttons, labels, disabled states, and they can even have roles like with alerts. For the structure, you can have a section, you can even use dividers, or you can even have menus nested within other menus for full control and organization. For the style, most of your styling is limited to the label appearance, and then you can use those roles like destructive for automatic styling. Otherwise, not a whole lot of styling you get, unfortunately. And there's just a few differences on the style. For iOS, you're pretty limited, but in my opinion, it looks pretty great right out the gate. And then the menu style, you can change that for any Mac OS as well. A very simple demo. If you want more of a use case demo, you can check out the link on my GitHub that has a few different views as an example how you can use those menus. And link for that is in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Dream big and code bigger.